The time flow of Genshin is convoluted to say the least. To the point that a lot of what happened in the Cataclysm, which is 500 years ago, presumably, before the Cataclysm, which points to Zhongli being more than 6,000 years ago, which also includes Ganyu, who is 3,000 years old, the primordial one, Thanes, who canonically made everything in Teyvat, as well as Ankanamiya, and lastly, everything in between it, which includes us, the travelers, our twin sibling, Hanria, Danesleaf, and the Ankanamians themselves, as well as everyone else that I forgot to mention. Welcome one and all lore hunters and people doing homework listening to my ramblings. This video is gonna be more of an actual rambling because I can't really make a clear theory for the topic in question, which if you already didn't know, is about the timeline of Genshin Impact, that we can't really explain why. There's no flow or route that I can pick so I'll just put them together in a way that they don't seem too random. So without further ado, on with the video. For a starter to this video, I'm gonna go with the oldest person that we know of. We all know that Zhongli is 6,000 years old, being the oldest Archon formerly known as Rex Lapis. The biggest takeaway for me is that if I can remember correctly, he is half Quillen and half Dragon, which could mean that he is a descendant of the seven Dragon Lords from way back. If you can remember, before Teyvat was created, there were seven Dragon Lords that fought with Fanes or Fanes, whichever you wanna call him. And Zhongli being half dragon, half Quillen makes me think of the time gap between both the Cataclysm from 500 years ago and whatever else happened for more than 6,000 years ago. But having said that, Zhongli is one of the people who are more in line with the actual flow of time in Teyvat, with the one problematic factor being his loss of memory through erosion set upon him by the heavenly principles of the higher gods in Celestia. As quoted by Zhongli himself, memory loss is one of the main factors of erosion and is also one of the main causes of erosion. But the emotions of the past are what keep hanging on, hence what happened to Azdaha. So anything before 1000 years is more or less out of discussion or theory because of the effects of erosion being memory loss. But I think that Zhongli is merely hiding or is not able to because of his quote unquote contract that he can't tell us. Speaking of erosion, the ones affected by these could be both Ganyu and Zhao, who are about 3,000 years old. Ganyu having trouble remembering the past and Zhao having problems after the war in the Cataclysm, with Zhao in particular being affected by what's called karma from what happened after the war. TLDR, um, karmic depth is basically the anger and remorse left over by the old gods and the Yakshar themselves when they fought in the war. And the only person that could help alleviate that karmic debt other than Zhao is of course Venti. Funnily enough, Venti is born from what's called the branches of time and that along with his musical specialty affects Xiao more than he could think. Okay, so these are the three main characters that I could think of or I could still remember that aren't affected by time dilation within the world of Teyvat. Here's where we start to muddle or mess up the flow of time using the first character that we find out about time dilation and differences in flow of time. This person has been to the abyss, was trained and lived there for quite some time before we even met him. Of course, I'm talking about Child. Had you going for a minute there, did I? So Child is the first person we meet who has actually been to the abyss and was able to come back out alive. He is also the first person that we know of that has experienced the difference in time flow of the abyss too. See, Child or Artalia or Ajax, when he was young, fell into a hole in the snow that led him all the way down to the abyss. After surviving the fall for some reason, he met Skirt, swordswoman who lives in the abyss, and she sensed something in Child that made her want to train him the quote-unquote ways of the abyss. How many times have I said abyss? Oh my gosh. And that's how he learned his foul legacy. And no, the hydro and electro abilities that he does are not his abyss powers. Those are his vision and illusion. His foul legacy is the third form where he basically starts teleporting, slashing with black magic mixed with hydro and electro. If you want to know more about Child and whatever happened to him before, here's a quick little link that I made for a video about Child. So anyway, Skirk trained Child and fought with him for about 3 months in the Abyss. 
at which point Child was able to get back to the surface and realize that it had only been 3 days, which makes the abyss and everything around or relatively near it have a different flow of time compared to everything else above it, which I think would be the reason why Conria and Enkanamiya has these crazy robots, animatronics, and all sorts of technology. Pair that with the fact that they basically had no gods or existing deity to lead them or tell them what to do, they're basically allowed to do pretty much whatever they want. The next person who was from the Abyss is of course Dainsley. He's also known for being a knight or a royal guard from the Eclipse Dynasty of Kanria and also has the name the Bowkeeper. Interestingly, he has some sort of ties with the spirit tree of the parable in Enkonomia's books before the sun and moon. I won't go too in depth into it, but a short and sweet of it is that Dainsleaf might have relations with the gardener and the bowkeeper, and could be part of the primordial one's side, but that itself has its own weird time placements because we don't really know when the parable of the tree took place and how Dainsleaf would exactly, and I mean exactly, be at that time. But given what I said, Dainsleaf could roughly be as old as the primordial one, or as old as one of the Enkanamians, because of his curse of immortality. But this makes Dainsleaf both part of Enkanamia, which existed for more than 6,000 years ago, and Kanria, which also existed until before, well, the Cataclysm. Another link to time dilation, as well as relations between Venti and Dainsleaf, is that in Venti's Miscellany trailer, Dainsleaf specifically mentions that the Anima Orkon left Teyvat for 1,000 years, but to Dainsleaf, it was only 500 years. Listen to this. A thousand years have passed since the god of Animo left this land. But to me, it has only been half that time. So, after listening to that, this makes time lapses and dilations more apparent than just Child's little field trip down the abyss. As for how long specifically Kanria existed compared to Enkanamiya, we don't really know because of the events of the Cataclysm and how vague everything is and how we basically know nothing about anything before 500 years. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. Because mentioning characters being present in two or more timelines mixed with the messed up time flow is possibly as difficult as explaining the Fate series or the Steins Gate series. Anyway, if you still haven't picked up what I'm putting down, here's another TLDR for everything that I just said. Dainsleaf is from Conria, which existed for roughly more than, let's say, 500 years but has some sort of speculative relation to Enkanamiya is through his name being the bookkeeper and relating it to the gardener in the Parable of the Tree, a book that is made by the Enkanamians, which existed since the first god Fanes or Fanes created Devat, which is probably more than 6,000 years ago. Because the oldest person we know of is Zhong Li, who is half dragon and half quillin, which also leads to some rough speculation that he could be a descendant of the seven dragon lords, which existed way before Teyvat itself was created. Okay, ugh, ugh. if you guys are still watching <laughs> and still don't know what's going on, even I'm confused about what I'm trying to say. So here's where we start counting years, days, and months and put together how long exactly things have been going on from all three worlds, hypothetically speaking, okay? If in the abyss, three months are equivalent to three days, so that means that one day is equal to one month as seen from child's experience, we can maybe assume that Kanria's time dilation is the same. But this is not entirely true because we still have no exact knowledge of how Kanria's time works and how everything else in the abyss especially about time, works as well. If Teyvat existed for about 6,000 years or so because of Zhongli being the oldest Teyvatian that we know, we could assume that one year in Teyvat is 30.5 years because one day is of course one month in the abyss and 365 months is 30.5 years. Okay, are you still following me? Now then, 3,000 years in Teyvat is basically 6,000 times 30.5 but that's if my math is correct so tell me in the comments how long exactly that is. But roughly speaking everything in the abyss is more than 150,000 years old. Think about that for a second. 
But that's to say that Kanria has the same time flow as the Abyss itself. And I mean everything in the Abyss. The next time dilation is Enkanamiya, which has its time flow set somewhat slower when they went under Teyvat. Okay, remember what I'm gonna say. When Enkanamiya was still on the surface, everyone lived as one civilization, so there was no Mondstadt, no Liwe, or no Inazuma, as well as all the other regions. But when they went under, it took them less than 10 years before they were able to get back up to the surface. But once they got to the surface, they were greeted by people from Inazuma, specifically people from Narukami, which shouldn't exist after a mere 10 years after the war between the second one and the primordial one. And if it existed, they should know about Enkanamiya given how long they went under for, right? 10 years. Like, anyone can remember something that happened 10 years, right? Heck, we can remember World War I and World War II, but everyone in Teyvat doesn't remember Enkanamiya after 10 years. Even if it took 500 or heck 1000 years for them to go back up to the surface, any human that was still up there, if there were any left, could have records of Enkanamiya and even the first god Fanes. But no, not one, if not barely anyone, knows about Enkanamiya apart from Watatsumi. In real life history records, we even have exact dates of specific events, which is you know, pretty weird. So it could either mean that the surface, meaning the upper world, Teyvat, undergone the same change that quickly without anyone noticing literally anything within 10 years, which is not possible at all, or about 1000 to 3000 years or more have already passed since the fall and the return of Enkanamiya. And no one, like absolutely no one, has records of it existing. Not even the name or slight cues or hints of a place called Enkanamiya, or even a god called the Primordial One. Keep in mind Inazuma and all the other nations already existed before the Cataclysm, and that includes Kanria. But none of that existed when Enkanamiya was still present. So I'm thinking that one or more years in Enkanamiya could be roughly equivalent to 100 or 500 years in the surface. That is to say, again, <laughs> that the book before the sun and moon was the only book with recorded years and time inside it. The only other book about Enkanamiya was a transcribed text based on a folk tale, quote unquote, rather than actual historical events. It does, however, mention the unnumbered years that passed before Enkanamiya met with the Orobashi, but that doesn't accurately say how long it took, which muddles Enkanamiya's timeline even more. The book mentions specifically the second year of sun and moon happening roughly after three years of darkness. If it took 10 or 50 or 10 years to progress, then the author would have written that down because of the importance to record time lapses. Imagine he recorded each year that passed in the abyss, so why wouldn't he record something that happened after 10, 50, or 100 years, right? Mihoyo, please don't fuck me over with this one. Especially because the author of this book is a scribe of Easteros, the god of time. Sadly, the scribe who wrote the one historically dated book is either gone or became a shade that we've yet to find, which ultimately makes Enkanamiya's history unknown unless told extensively on future patches. Finally, we have the Travelers, which are in and of themselves anomalies in the world of Teyvat because, well, they're outlanders. And our relation with Dainsleep is quite interesting as well. Because Dainsleep is aware of Outlanders, which means that Dainsleep could also be aware of both the Primordial One, the Second One, Celestia's Gods, and whoever else is from the outside world. As for now, the Traveler is still in the Teyvat time flow, but our sibling has been to the Abyss, and who else knows where she's been to in some form or fashion. As well as Dainsleaf coming from Kanria, being a travel buddy for our sibling, and is able to enter those Abyss portals. But the time dilation between us and our sibling is way too messed up since they've been doing that even before we first saw them after waking up. The key takeaway here is that our sibling mentions that we've always had time. So time is a really really big factor in the world of Teyvat because that implies that we or our sibling are either able to go back in time or alter how the way time works. But until then, the only thing we can do is pause the game using Paimon. 
Anyway, after all that, I don't really know how to end this video. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed my ramblings. Like, literal ramblings. But I think that 2.5 releasing is gonna add a lot more lore, especially on Ekonomiya. So I guess we'll hopefully see more info about Time, Easteroth, the Abyss, the Abyss Order, and of course Ekonomiya in the next patch. But before I end my video, I wanna thank Evangelist, Sister Mari, Agent M, and Beb from Honey Hunters Discord. If you guys are looking for more people to talk to about Genshin, or any other gacha game, like I said before, go check them out at Honey Hunters Discord. Everyone there is pretty chill and even if it's not a gacha game, it's fine. They have Bloodborne, they have Monster Hunter, and lots of other games. So go check them out. As always, thank you guys for watching. Comment below what you guys think of time and how messed up it is in Genshin. Of course, like and subscribe if you enjoyed my video, as well as hitting that bell icon to stay updated to my videos. And with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah?